name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We say together, Almighty Amen. God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. <coughs> that which God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand and say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Holy Spirit sent by the Father, ignite in us your Holy Father. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of life, and renew the face of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me sit for our reading. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. 
I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 and following. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were given, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. These are not drunk, as you might suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Know this is what was spoken to the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, when the Advocate comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. But now I am going to him who sent me, Yet none of you asks me where you're going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, 
the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some years ago, when my youngest daughter was at university in London, she asked me to help her move from the leafy suburbs where she had an extremely overpriced room in North London to Croydon where rooms were much more affordable. And so we hired a van and drove through central London, which is an experience all by itself, and arrived at Croydon. And she was just about to start taking stuff into the new house when I heard noise. Now, if you're a parent, this is a noise you'll be familiar with. And it's the sound of a child's head hitting a stone or concrete floor. Most children do at some point or other. This child was about twice the distance away from me as the back of the churches, down the end of the road, and had been playing with his mates on some scaffolding. And when I got there to see what was going on, I could see what he'd done. He jumped up from the step in front of the house where the scaffolding was and hooked his hands onto the scaffolding bomb, which if you do it, Vertically is fine, but he must have had a bit of forward motion. So as he held on, his body swung, his hands came off and he fell backwards. He was clean out, as they say, unconscious and lifeless. And uh, I couldn't see the breath. Of him. And then he started to fit. And it reminded me of when I had seen a dog run over, which had also had the same experience, and soon after that died. So I didn't feel very hopeful for this little chap's future. He was about 10 years old. And uh, as I was holding his hands and doing all the mummy type things that we instinctively do in such situations, after what seemed like an absolute age, he took a breath. Now, this was not a breath like any other I've ever heard or seen or done myself. You imagine how long you can take in breath. If you empty your lungs completely and then fill them up, it'll take you maybe two or three seconds. This one went on for, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. It was an enormous breath. I don't know where he put all the air he took in. It went on and on and on. And when it finished, he screamed his head off, as you might imagine. That, for me, was one of the nearest thing I've ever seen to a resurrection. And the key feature of that for today's purposes is to, to see the association that we have instinctively between breath and life. And if you've had a baby or been present at the birth of a baby, you all know how wonderful it is when they take that first breath in the outside world and prove to you that they're alive and they normally do the same thing as that little boy which is screaming their head off because they want something they don't know what it is yet but they know they want something in ezekiel we have this huge picture of the bones in this dry valley being put together and brought back to life and the moment in which they're brought to life is when god breathes life into them. Of course it's an allegory, it stands for the resurrection of the people of Israel and how God is going to bring them back to life as a nation, but it draws on this same very very fundamental concept of breath. In Genesis, in the second account of the creation, God forms man from the dust of the earth and then breathed into him 
through his nostrils the breath of life. Whether we know it or not, or think about it or not, this concept of breathing is essentially what we associate with life. And in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that the Holy Spirit, which was the coming of God to the people of Jesus, was like a rushing wind, an enormous, overarching, overawing wind, breathing life into humanity on a vast scale. In other words, Pentecost is about new life. On an individual scale, the followers of Jesus found that they could do things they couldn't normally do. They could communicate with other people across language barriers. Now, the story dramatically talks about them speaking in different tongues. And there are certain elements of the Christian faith that get carried away with this and will encourage people to speak in tongues that no one can understand. I don't see any point in that. The whole purpose of Pentecost was so the gospel could be understood by people of all languages. So let's keep focused on that. I remember going to uh, Holland once on a musical exchange, and uh, I'm, I'm not the world's greatest linguist. I can manage parts of English, English reasonably well. Uh, I have a few French words and even fewer German. And I was sit sitting with various people at the uh, meal after the concert, and there were Dutch and there were French and there were Germans. And they all, of course, spoke wonderful English. They should do that now too. And uh, I was struggling to make myself understood. But what I found very interesting was that because there was a sense of collective goodwill about the whole event, we were all willing to try to understand each other. Now contrast that with when someone in your own language says something which is convoluted or is intended to mislead you, and you'll see that people can try very hard to be not understood, even in their own time. And I think it's this spirit of cooperation, of believing that we're all working together that enables people to overcome not only language barriers but cultural barriers of all sorts and kinds. These are the kind of things that the gift of the Holy Spirit enables us to do. We are empowered to do great things sometimes. On a corporate scale, I use the word corporate deliberately. You'll probably think that sounds like business speak. But if you look at most of the great concepts in business speak, they actually owe their origin to the Christian faith, oddly enough. For example, the file of facts, that old fashioned physical diary that people still use, was invented by an Anglican clergyman. Just thought you'd like to know that. And corporate means, of course, of the body. Corpus Latin word, Corpus Christi, the, uh, the festival we think of the body of Christ in the sacrament. So corporate means of the body and the Holy Spirit is seen as a gift to the church which marks it as the birthday of the church because it's the point at which a great community started to live. From the tiniest of beginnings 11 or so disciples, maybe a hundred other close followers. And from that has grown the largest religion on the planet, 2.4 million, billion, sorry, 2.4 billion followers. That's nearly a quarter of the world's population. So what is the nature of this new life? Well, it's not necessarily doing great or heroic things. Martin Luther King, a great and heroic person, said, in typical humility, if I, he said, if I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. 
And that reminds me of a course which I've talked about before, personal development course I went on in, in London at one point, and we started at the beginning of a very long and tiring weekend on Friday evening, and we finished at about 11, and the leader said, I'm going to give you some homework at 11 o'clock at night. I want you to make a list of 100 of your pet hates. So we all turned up the next day and he said, well, we'll stand up about 30 of us. Uh, if you've um, written down, I think he said six, 60 pet hates, put your hand up. And he said, you're asked to do 100. Sit down. <laughs> Wipe the floor with it. Similarly, it was 70, 80, and 90, 100. I think about two people had actually done more than 100. And I have to confess I wasn't one of them. And he said, you've invested a weekend on this course. You've invested a considerable amount of money in it. And I ask you to do a simple task as a piece of homework. It's not difficult. You don't have to do any research. You don't have to start late. Just a hundred things and you can't be bothered. Are you really committed to this? So we uh, all felt a little bit smaller than we were when we walked in. But it's true, isn't it? Were we really committed or did we think, oh yeah, 100, why? They don't really mean 100 or 50, that would be enough. That will do. I think this is part of what Martin Luther King was talking about. We may not all be able to save the world or the universe, but the things we can do, we can do well, and we can do to the limit of our ability. Whether it's creating art, whether it's knitting a jumper, whether it's baking a cake, whether it's cleaning the car, making a roast, or preparing the house for guests, all of these things we can do with greater or lesser commitment. And every moment of life presents opportunities for us to be more fully alive in what we do. And we know that when someone is inspired by the Spirit, we recognise that because of its fruits, which are love and joy and peace. My aunt Muriel, who I've mentioned before, when I would visit her, she would always say, when are you going to come and see us, Jeff? She would prepare the house and the meals and activities precisely in such a way as to make you feel welcomed into your ideal home. If we can do that for our guests, and I don't just mean people who come to stay with us, but people who are guests in our life, people who we meet and talk to, even if, if it's only for a few minutes, if we can have that amount of presence in the moment and do that for our guests, we create an embassy of the kingdom of heaven. We we'll stand and say together our affirmation of our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from our We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. The response to our prayer this morning is, Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Come. Holy Spirit, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. In the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray for a fresh inbreathing of life and power in each church community which breaks down our barriers and sets us on fire with God's love. We pray for our bishops, Alan, Richard, Michael, all persecuted Christians, and the worldwide church. 
Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. For the grace to see this world and its needs and problems through the eyes of love, hope, justice and mercy. For the grace to abandon prejudice and build bridges of reconciliation. We pray especially for Israel and Gaza at this time. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. For the spirit of loving kindness to fill our homes, schools and places of work. For family risks to be healed and long-standing conflicts resolved. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. For the restoration of those who are sick, to wholeness and well-being, for courage and patience in all suffering, and for good to be distilled from every painful, destructive experience. And we continue to pray for those in illness, trouble or distress. Chris, Jake, Claire, Jim, Yvonne, Sandra, Neil Cousins, Emily, Mervyn, Beryl, Paul, Margaret, Neil, Irene, Ken and Aurelia, Glenn, Lauren, Catherine, and any others known to us. We continue to pray for all those suffering from coronavirus, those working to relieve them, and for the staff and residents in our care home, especially Chase House, who tomorrow will have a memorial service for those who died during the pandemic. Come, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come. For God's merciful judgment on those who have died and the opportunity for us all to prepare carefully for meeting God face to face. And we pray for Mark Rainbow and his family. Come, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come. For a deeper knowledge and love of the God who knows and loves us completely. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Father, by your Holy Spirit, you keep the church in unity and truth. As we break bread together, may we be one with Christ in faith and hope and love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> the Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, 
to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Peter, Guthlach, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life, we who drink his cup bring life to us. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost, bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.